Hello and welcome to Kathy's Kitchen Recipes webisode number three. Today I'll be making burritos, which is a quick and easy dish for one, but the ingredients can easily be doubled for two, and you'll find the ingredient list for one in the description box below. The main equipment that you need for this dish is a chopping board, a sharp knife, a saucepan or a fry pan, and an oven-proof baking dish. The first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, and then you must prepare all the ingredients before you begin to cook. That's a French term called mise en place. Now, the safety aspect of chopping must always be considered. You need to stabilize your chopping board by damping down some paper towel or a cloth that goes underneath the board. Press down firmly and you'll see that that's quite stable. All right, now the first thing that we need to do is to prepare our onion. Now, you can either use a purple onion or a brown onion, the choice is up to you, but make sure it's medium to small. And we only need a quarter of that, so top and tail it. And when you're cutting it in half, do so with part of the root on each half. Always put the cut side down, flat, so that what you're cutting is quite stable. And this is what we'll be using today. Part of the root still attached and that makes chopping easier and safer. All right, turn the root section away. Make some thin slices, about four millimeters apart. Turn it and then do some very tiny slices towards the root. Curl your fingers over and tuck your thumb in. And also have a dish ready that you're going to put all of your prepared ingredients on. A tablespoon of corn kernels is required for this recipe. I'll be putting all the prepared vegetables on this plate here. Alright, now with the capsicum you can either have red or green. It depends on the season and your tastes. Just, you only need about an eighth of a capsicum. If they're very small, use a quarter. If they're large, an eighth is plenty. Just cut the white membrane section off because that's not very nice to eat. And about half centimetre slices. Once again, curl your fingers over, tuck your thumb in behind, put them together and slice them in this direction. Now with the carrot, we're going to do what's called precision cutting. You can either peel your carrot or just scrub it with um, some steel wool. It's up to you on how fresh the carrot is and how dirty the skin is. Now make sure that it is stable, hold it very firmly but make sure your fingers are away from the knife. A half centimetre slice, turn the cut side over and then keep cutting the slices into a half centimetre. Now turn them over and cut each one in half again. You only want small pieces about the same size as the corn kernel. Right, but push these together, butt them up, and once again, fingers curled over, thumb tucked in. Now, make sure your chopping board's firm. We're going to crush the garlic. I always cut the little bottom bit off first of all before I smash the garlic. And the reason why I smash it is to release the oils. Make sure that this part of the hand is used. The blade is pointing away from you. The wider the knife, the easier that is to do. You'll find the skin comes away very easily then. Also inside the garlic clove, there is a little bit that is tough and fibrous right in the center. Just take that out, line all the pieces up, very fine slices. Now just as you did with your other 
ingredients turned around, fingers curled under, thumb tucked in. Now, push it together on the chopping board, hold the tip of the knife with your non-dominant hand and begin chopping in a circular motion, bringing back the pieces that might fly around on the chopping board. All right, now you need to remove that from the knife. Don't use your fingers to do this, it's not safe. Put it back into a square shape. And at this stage, you can salt it. The recipe will require a little bit of salt, but not much because we do have um, a prepared taco sauce. And the salt's going to act as an abrasive now. With the blade facing away from you, you need to smash, press hard down. The bottom of the pile of garlic, work your way up to the top and smash and drag it on the chopping board. All right, remove this. Do this a couple of times. Make sure that you've got it all off the knife. One more time should do. Okay. Now the other ingredients that we've got for this dish is half of a beef stock cube. The spices are oregano, ground cumin and some chilli powder. We've got about an eighth of a teaspoon of chilli powder, that's entirely up to you and um, how hot you like your burritos. Quarter of a teaspoon of dried oregano and half a teaspoon of dried powdered cumin. I've also got 150 grams of ground beef mince. Now, the leaner the beef mince, the better it is for you and the nicer the dish. So just buy whatever beef you can afford, but I tend to find that the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So if you were to buy two kilos on special, the quantity you need for this for one person is only 150 grams, but you could actually freeze it into 150 gram lots or 300 gram lots or even bundle up a whole kilo to make lasagna with at a later date. And I've also got half a cup of crushed or chopped or diced tinned tomatoes. And I've used a jug to measure that. Now that I have all the ingredients ready, it's time to start cooking. Preheat your fry pan first. You can have it on high to start with, but turn it down when you think it's hot enough. Don't touch the pan, you just feel the heat radiating off the top there. Uh, we don't want to burn the meat, we only want to lightly brown it. I'll turn that down a little bit now. And I'm also, when you think it's hot, add a little bit of spray oil, but away from the flame. Highly flammable. The reason why I'm adding spray oil is because the mince is very lean and there's not a lot of fat in it. A plastic spoon is also important with a non-stick saucepan or fry pan. Right, break the mince up as it cooks. Keep it moving. All right, now when about just about all the pink color has gone, you can add your onions next. turn translucent, which means see-through. Keep breaking up any large pieces of meat that you can see in the pan. Right, the next thing I'm going to add is the crushed garlic. And I add it now because I don't want it to burn. When you can start to smell that, the garlic, add your spices. We're adding them now to release their flavour and to make sure they're cooked through. Just adjust the heat as you feel the propane may be getting too hot. Alright, now cook the spices out for a few moments. 
and it'll still be raw and hard on the taste buds. Carrots take longer than the carrot than the corn or the capsicum, so I'd add those next. about 30 seconds apart. Capsicum and the corn can go in. Alright, now half a cup of tinned tomatoes can go in next. And half a beef stock cube. Break that up. Now if you think this is a little bit dry, and it does look a little bit dry to me, you can add about a tablespoon or so of water, but I put it in with the jug that you had the tomatoes in just to make sure that you get the rest of the flavour from that. So only a little splash of water, about a tablespoon. Now stir this around and let it simmer for about five minutes just to get rid of the excess moisture. And once that's simmered for about five minutes, we're ready to assemble the burritos. Alright, now the filling has been cooking for about five minutes until the moisture has reduced and the carrots are tender. I need to put a little bit of freshly ground black pepper into that. Make sure you always use a pot stand when bringing hot fry pans and saucepans over to the bench top. And no metal utensils in a non-stick pan. Alright, now to assemble the burritos you'll need a lettuce leaf. Take the uh, hard spiny bit off the back. Make sure it's been washed and dried. Roll it up tightly and on your stabilised chopping board, fine shred around about three or four millimetres. Once again, fingers curled over, thumb tucked in. And put that into a bowl. Alright, now to assemble. You'll need two tortilla wraps. Take approximately half the filling, put it a little bit off center, try not to overfill these because it will ooze out the side everywhere, and then a little bit of your shredded lettuce, and Four tablespoons of grated cheese is enough for two burritos. Some of it can go inside the wrap and the rest is going to go on top when it's baking. So just a small sprinkle of cheese for the inside. Now tidy it up. Gently roll it over. And before we put that into the baking dish, Make sure you let it sit on the seam. Just give it a light spray with oil so it won't stick. And put it seam side down. Second one. You may find you have enough filling for three. I'll just do two today, however. Remember, don't use all the cheese. Let's it around so it's easier to find it. Wrap it as tightly as you can. Seam side down. Push them together. And the remainder of the cheese can get sprinkled on top. Now 
Now these go into the preheated oven just long enough to melt the cheese. And they'll be coming out in about three or four minutes. The cheese is melted on the burritos now and it's time to take them out of the oven. Make sure you've got a pot stand to protect your bench and use oven mitts to protect your hands. Make sure you turn your oven off. Now very carefully transfer them to a serving dish. And here I have two tablespoons of warmed taco sauce. I've used the medium strength for chilli but you can use mild if you like. And I've put it in the microwave for 20 seconds on medium high. Spoon that over both of the burritos. Top it off with about a tablespoon of sour cream. I've got some light sour cream here. And if you like, you can decorate the top with a little bit of paprika. If you really like your burritos hot and spicy, you could use chili, but I like paprika. And here we have burritos for one. Thank you for watching my third entry. I hope you found it useful. Stay tuned for my next entry where I will begin a series of very easy Vietnamese dishes starting off with summer rolls.